And now for the events in Washington following the funeral of the president, we switch you to Russ Ward in Washington. Morgan, the story here right now is one of a diplomatic reception at the White House. Scores, actually hundreds of diplomats arriving one at a time, two, three, four in groups, limousines pulling up continually at the executive mansion. The greeter on the north portico, William Tonest, the deputy chief of protocol at the State Department, shaking hands, occasionally the diplomats arriving, wiping tears from their eyes, still overcome with grief from the assassination on Friday and the dramatic funeral procession that uh, occurred earlier this afternoon. It's um, still quiet here. I flew down from New York uh, earlier this afternoon, and the plane actually flew over Arlington National Cemetery, where the uh, funeral took place. You could, uh, even from an altitude of perhaps 5,000 feet, you could look down and see the ribbons of black lining Memorial Bridge. Of course, the ribbons being spectators waiting, standing quietly, watching as the funeral procession was to come by a few moments later. The plane landed, and I drove up <clears throat> what many of our listeners, I'm sure, know as a beautiful drive along the Potomac River, the Mount Vernon <clears throat> Memorial Parkway. And all along the parkway, on <clears throat> both sides, cars parked five, six deep. People who had left their cars there early this morning. To walk, oh, perhaps half a mile up to Memorial Bridge. The Arlington National Cemetery, of course, was closed to the public. But these people, wanting to get a <clears throat> final glimpse of the funeral procession, it was a thoroughly touching moment. And I couldn't help but uh, feel at the time as I joined the crowd going toward Memorial Bridge that We've seen another day of <clears throat> history made, but it'll be a long time before we forget it. 